Hey, this is Pastor Gary for another Wednesday Word. I pray that this uh, finds you doing well. Um, today, I'd like to uh, just spend some time uh, in 2 Timothy. Now, this was, just to give you a little bit of you know, background in 2 Timothy, uh, this was the last letter that Paul wrote. Um, you know, Paul wrote knowing that his end was near. Uh, he, he spent this time encouraging Timothy and, and giving him final instructions on how to move forward. You know, this letter talks about the Christian endurance and the things that, that we will encounter as Christians, but to have the endurance to continue uh, through those things and, and to be careful of false prophets. Um, you know, let's open up to 2 Timothy 2. Uh, we're going to be in verses 14 to 19. 2 Timothy 2. Verses 14 through 19. And this is God's word. It says, Remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words, which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of God. But avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness. And their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, men who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place, and they have set the faith of some. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his and everyone whose name who who names the name of the lord is to abstain from wickedness now let's pray father god father god we give you this time father father i pray father that you just uh, block out any distractions father so that we could just spend te dedicated time with you father in your presence father father we thank you for all that you do we thank you for your grace and your mercy father it's in jesus name amen well, amen. So in these verses, Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy to continue to fight the, the fight of faith. Uh, no matter how hard it gets, he urges him to work diligently, to interpret and apply God, the word of God, God's word, uh, to the world that he live, lives in. Paul urges Timothy not to be ashamed of the Lord. Now in chapter 2, uh, Paul gives us three pictures of discipleship staying faithful and focused and because we are to be obedient like soldiers disciplined like athletes and persistent like farmers now let's look at verse 15 i really want to drill down into verse 15 it says be diligent to present yourselves approved to god as a workman who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of god you see we could summarize this verse like this Work hard at handling the word of God because how we handle God's word determines whether we'll be an approved worker or an ashamed wanderer. There are three imperatives from this passage. We're to stay hungry. We're to work hard and we're, accurate, and, and we're to accurately handle. Let's look at that first one. It says to stay hungry. We're to be diligent. Diligent is characterized by being steady, earnest, and having an energetic effort towards something. We are to make every effort to present ourselves approved. It's a command to do it now, not uh, without delay. So no one, you know, is, is to just kind of uh, just mosey or, or lollygag. We're, it's so that we can accomplish the objective immediately. It's not, we're not trying to put it off. To borrow from the, the title of devotional by Oswald Chambers, we're to do our utmost for the highest. My concern is that too many Christians, there's too many of us who are coasting on God's word and his promises instead of craving God's word. I wonder if it's because we're just too full of other things. We got too many things on our plate, right? We just, it's just not enough time in the day. We have to make time. You make time for what's important. And if we're to, to, to know God's word, if we're to be in God's word, that's, that's important enough to spend time with God in his word, reading the Bible. Uh, you know, Proverbs 23, 12 says, apply your heart to discipline and your ears to words of knowledge. 
How can we apply our heart and how can our ears and uh, be focused on words of truth if we're not reading, if we're not a, around godly people seeking godly counsel, seeking wisdom, discernment from God's word? Paul tells Timothy to present yourself approved to God. The idea is that we are to present ourselves for service, that we to present ourselves useful for service, to be approved. This comes from being tested by trials and being fortified by fire. You see, we either seek the approval of others or, or we're diligent to be approved to God, by God. We're to work hard. In this context, Paul is specifically telling Timothy to work hard at his, at his study of God's word so that he can correctly teach God's word. That means that we need to work hard at studying God's word. You might read this requirement and, and think it's only for the pastor, right? It's from the pastoral epistles. I mean, this is where we get, you know, uh, this is where uh, Paul wrote 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, the pastoral epistles. So you're thinking, okay, this is just for preachers, teachers, and pastors. And it certainly does apply to them, but it's not limited to them. Every believer is charged to diligently pursue God's word, learning its truth while allowing the word to shape and tr transform our lives. We are more, you know, we, we are more advanced technology, technologically than we've ever been before. We have more access to information than any other previous generation. The Bible is right there, literally at our fingertips. But we end up going to other places besides spending time with God, even on our phones, even with technology and it being so accessible to us. Yet, you know, and yet our churches are filled with those who lack basic biblical knowledge. Paul is telling Timothy that if we would commit him, if he would commit himself to be diligent, a, a diligent student of the word, he would have no reason to be ashamed. He would boldly stand proclaiming the eternal truths of the word in full assurance and confidence. He could preach the truth in full assurance of its uh, uh, of the ability to of its ability to convict and transform lives. Paul desired for Timothy. Paul des, Paul's desire for Timothy was to know the word and to stand confidently, assured of its truth. In the same way, we need to stand confidently. We need to defend our faith to those who question it, to those that that try to attack it. But so many times we we shy away from those conversations. And it's not, it's not that we don't want to offend. It's just because we don't know. And by not knowing we are offending, we're offending the one that gave us, that gives us grace, that gives us mercy, that gave us salvation, that gives us an opportunity to know God. We offend him by not knowing him. So we, you know, let me put it this way. Philippians 120, Paul wrote this in Philippians 120, according to my earnest expectations and hope that I will not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ will even now, as always, be exalted in the body, whether by life or by death. By the way, this is where we get the uh, our Awanas the, at Spring Campus. We do the Awanas program. This is where Awanas comes from. It's approved workmen are not ashamed. Our kids in Awana is doing an amazing job at memorizing scripture. You know, my oldest son, Jordan, went through the Awana program, and he still knows those verses. Aiden went through Awanas. He still knows those verses. One of the sweetest memories I have from Awanas is, is one graduation night where Jordan was standing on stage and each kid got the opportunity to recite uh, in a one in a scripture that they learned throughout their year. And Jordan was on stage and he was he was he was reciting the verse. And I was down there because I was one of the I wanted teachers and I was standing there in front. And he he got nervous and he looked down at me, looked down to me. And then with confidence, he, he continued to share that verse that he had learned. You know, we push our kids and, and we, we our desire is for our kids to know scripture so that they'll be stored in their heart. But how many, how many of us are memorizing scripture? How many of us are spending time with God knowing what these verses mean so that we will have those same scriptures stored in our heart? If we expect it for our kids, then we should expect it of ourselves. Amen? Amen.
with that being said, Awana's night, uh, our Awana is award night, graduation night is May Wednesday, May 26th here at the Spring Campus. It is a great time. You know, it, it's it's one of those nights where uh, we usually have a low attendance because it's Awana's, right? And a, you know, many of our our congregation don't have kids in Awana's, but you know, how great it would it be for those kids to know that Believers Fellowship supports them and prays for them and encourages them. So I encourage you uh, to come out Wednesday, May 26th for a wanted graduation night. We're going to have a great time of fellowship. It'll be a good word, great word by Pastor Matt. And then we'll have a dessert fellowship afterwards. So come on out Wednesday, May 26th here at the Spring Campus. Uh, let me get to where, okay. And, and so the third thing is to accurately handle. This final phrase is, is in the present tense, meaning that we are always to be correctly handling the word of truth. In the Greek, it means to guide along a straight path. This word uh, was used in several different ways. Tent makers would pr uh, precisely cut pieces of leather to be sewn together. It refers to cutting of a path in, in a straight direction uh, so that travelers um, could take the most direct route to their destination. It also used in farming to refer to plowing a straight a straight line or uh, with regards to farming and planting. When the scriptures are cut straight, we can see how all the pieces fit together. It will help us go in the right direction and we'll receive the nourishment we need to grow. All scripture is God is God's word. It's God, it's God breathed, it's inherent. 2 Timothy 3.16 describes the scripture as being profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. That's all of it. Not some of it, all of it. Even the parts you don't like. All of it is God breathed. All of it is inherent. And we, we should be correctly or accurately handling all of it. Not our interpretation, but what God means by it, what the, the, the authors mean by it, and that's the Holy Spirit. What that's the interpretation. The only interpretation that matters is 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 what God meant by it, not what we think it means. James 1.22 says, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Well, how can we be doers of the word when we don't know the word? So many of the letters in the New Testament cautioned the church to be mindful of false teachers. So, you know, they didn't have the, the Bible back then in, 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 in the first century church, right? They didn't have the luxury of, of looking at different uh, uh you know, the NIV, the NSAB, the New King James translation, they didn't have different translations. It was letters that Paul, Peter, James, Jude, you know, they wrote and, and they shared in these churches. And so they were doers because they heard and they listened to these words. And they cautioned them about being, you know, uh, be aware of, of false teachers because it, it seemed like as soon as uh, a church was established, false teachers would come on. Judaizers would come in and say, no, you, you're not a Christian until you, you know, circumcision or whatever the case is. You know, there was false teachers of false uh, teachers going and, and, and diluting the God, God's word and what the you know, these churches were established by. The same goes true for us today. We need to guard ourselves from listening to those who water down the word or they cave to the culture. You see, we seek the approval of God, not people, not man. Because remember, we are approved workmen who are not ashamed. Amen? Well, amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this devotional on just being approved, being an approved workman and not being ashamed of God's word and remaining steadfast and diligent and always being ready to share your faith by knowing God's word. Amen? Well, amen. Well, uh, a couple of closing announcements. Don't forget church on Sunday. Also, I want to in invite you, uh, invite all mothers to Mother's Day, May 9th at our Magnolia and Spring Campus. We're going to have photo booths set up, a photo booth set up at, at, at both campuses, opportunities for families to get your photos taken with mom before church and after church. Be sure to sign up. Uh, for the photo booth if you're going to do it before church. Uh, there's limited slots before church. And so to get in on that, uh, you need to sign up this Sunday. If you're going to wait till after church, that's fine. There's no need to sign up, but understand that priority will be given to our guests. So if we have any first-time guests, 
uh, they'll be able to go straight to uh, in front of the line to get their pictures taken. We want to be sure to to uh, allow them that time to do that. And so I, I urge you to either sign up in the morning or just come in, at, come after church and, and get in line to have your photo taken with mom. Uh, I also encourage you to invite your mom if she's not a member or she doesn't attend Believers Fellowship to bring her to church. We'll have a free gift for her, uh, a great word, and uh, it'll just be a great day of celebration uh, to moms. And so uh, again, that's May 9th at both of our campuses. Uh, I want to pray uh, for a couple of families. I want to pray for the Colburn family, uh, the Allen family, and, and for the Masons, Ronnie Mason's brother-in-law, uh, for his loss and, and for that family. So let's just pray as we close out. Father God, Father God, I just pray for these families, Father. Father, I pray for uh, just um, that you minister to them, Father, that you comfort them, Father. Father, I pray, Father, that during this time, Father, that you just allow them, Father, just to lean on you for understanding, lean on you for comfort. Father, Father, I pray in the days, weeks, and months to come, Father, Father, that they remain steadfast in their faith, Father, that they seek you, Father, for quest for answers, Father, Father, and that they remain, Father, confident, knowing, Father, that you're in charge, Father. We thank you for all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. God bless.